So I'm going to talk about game closure today. Uh, so game closure is a framework that has been built in JavaScript. So it's actually a game framework. Uh, you can actually build games where you write code in JavaScript and then uh, the game runs on mobile devices, uh, primarily Android and uh, iOS. So I'm one of the founders that actually we make games. Uh, we've been primarily focused on Facebook. Now we're actually targeting mobiles. We've been releasing JavaScript from the beginning, so we did web-based games and then Facebook games, and then now we're doing mobile games. So we're actually working on JavaScript um, and with a little bit of something. Uh, that's about me. Okay. So JavaScript is um, very popular these days. So it, the popularity kind of started with uh, Ajax, then a uh, the lot of client-side frameworks that we can really use. And they made JavaScript more uh, popular because of that and then Node came and then JavaScript became popular on the server side. And uh, uh, Game Social, they, uh, they ride on the popularity and then they help you make games with JavaScript. And they do it well. And uh, the aim with this, with this talk is that uh, I'll run you through the introduction. It's just an introduction to Game Social, so you'll be able to understand what, what it provides how helpful it is and uh, maybe you will also, also find useful and maybe make a game of it. Uh, so a little bit of background. Uh, the Enclosure is a company that started two years back. They were funded, uh, they were a close beta for two years. Now they made open source last February. Uh, they are actually in the news for a while. So um, I guess Zynga and uh, Facebook wanted to buy them. They turn on the office. Um, so it's a game framework. Um, it's open source, it's free. It, uh, it's based on Mozilla public license. Um, you write code and you can actually build games for Android and iOS uh, with literally no change. And you write code in JavaScript. So why is it good? Uh, so you write code in JavaScript. Obviously, it's awesome. Um, and then you write games as if it's HTML5. So it's, you write, you think of it as uh, writing HTML5 games, but finally it'll work on the mobile. Uh, you'll have the native performance that you uh, you get on mobile, and it is uh, almost right on front anywhere. So you actually build it once. You can uh, run it on Android, or iOS, or no. I think with little modification, it's even for the web. And they also have uh, very good tools to make you make the development process very simple. Uh, okay. So these are tools that they have. Uh, I'll run you through the tools. I'll also show a demo soon after this slide. Uh, so native inspector. So the way they work is uh, the whole development can actually be done on the browser, and uh, you don't have to go to the device to uh, by doing development. So that is your primary goal. So they cut down the development time a lot. So for that they have very good tools. One is a native inspector. So uh, native inspector is a tool where you can actually inspect the scene graph. Scene graph is the elements that are placed on the screen, that are visible on the screen again. And it will allow you to inspect them, see which views are visible, which text view is visible, which, uh, and it will help you debug. So that is one tool that they provide. It's built on Chrome itself. And uh, you can use the regular Chrome tools. So for example, if you want to debug performance, you could do that. So you can use the inbuilt profiler that Chrome has and then uh, debug your code. And you can also use the regular JavaScript debugging because it's entirely in JavaScript, so you can actually use the regular JavaScript uh, debugging tools. The other thing that they provide is remote debugging. So you connect your device and then you connect to the machine. And then using Chrome Inspector itself, you can actually debug uh, the machine remotely, the uh, app remotely. And there's something called test app functionality. So there are cases where you actually want to test it on the device, but the cycle is actually very slow. So you compile it and then put it on the device and then you make changes. And again, if you want to make something else, then you have to redo the same, redo the cycle. So there are this functionality called test app, func uh, test app functionality, where you uh, make modifications and then it is uh, visible immediately. Uh, so the way they do it is a server runs on your machine and the uh, uh, phone connects to the server. So a node server runs. It's an express-based server, and they connect to the uh, server and then get the code and then run it. So that's how they achieve that. 
and uh, they also allow you to test with different resolutions and devices. A little bit of demo. Uh, so, the tools that they have, they are primarily built on Node.js and uh, for compiling they use C++, Java for uh, Android devices. Uh, so, most of them are open source tools. Uh, I just asked. So, the tool is actually called Basin. The installation instructions are actually on the website. So to create a new project, you just have to uh, vessel in it. So this actually creates a project. Uh, once the project is created, you would actually want to run a server to serve the files. So the way you do it is basically serve. And uh, usually the server runs on port 9200. So in Hello World, uh, so this is a Hello World app which is created. And if you click on Save It, so, so once you click on Save It, you can actually see what is happening. So I was talking to you about tools that uh, the Enforcer provides. So one thing I was mentioning was uh, the UI inspector. So this brings up elements that are visible on the screen at that point in time. Uh, so this is a text view, you can actually click on text view and edit the properties here. So for example, if you want to change the font, you can actually change the font in real time and then uh, make see the changes uh, then and there. Then I talked to you about uh, uh, different resolutions. So we actually built a game on top of this, so I think I'm ready to demo that. So there's a game that we built. So this is actually in uh, iPhone. Now you can actually choose a device. reducing the size uh, you get the idea so you can actually see how it looks on different devices immediately <coughs> so if you want to look on android for example you can choose access um, so one of the things that you actually want to do in uh, developing for different devices is because the screen sizes and resolutions vary a lot uh, you would want to take care of that and so that uh, and once you take care of that there are me mechanisms to do that and once you take care of that you don't actually want to see the results immediately and this helps you do that. Uh, the other things, you can actually use the regular Chrome debugging tools. So to access the JavaScript you can actually change to this iframe, the simulator iframe which will access uh, the JavaScript which is in the page. So, if I, so these are global uh, variables. So I can say gc dot library. So this is like a user object that we have within our game, and you can see it's actually a backward form. Uh, so you can see, you can inspect it, you can change it, you can run code. You can do for example. So this will actually give you all the views that are present on the screen right now. Uh, a little bit of the UI inspector. <coughs> For example, I pick the logo, I want to change the position immediately to align elements, I can do that on the frame. Um, so this is all on JavaScript and once you want to build it on the device, you just run a command, it creates a binary and then you deploy it on the device. Uh, a little bit of internals, so you sure want to know how it works. So they have a JavaScript SDK. So that exposes some APIs to create uh, uh, elements, views inside uh, in your code. So you can create text view, button view, those kind of views. And there's a game closure API that they use internally that acts, uh, that acts as a bridge between the JavaScript interpreter and 
the JavaScript SDK. So the way the game uh, game flow works is so they have built in the uh, JavaScript interpreter as part of the game. So in iOS it is Spider Monkey and in Android it is V8. So that's how your game runs. Um, and then they convert those calls to the native calls. So that's how they work as a whole. And these are actually the element of this, this is like the architecture of the of the whole stack. So the JavaScript interpreter can be either be Spider Monkey or V8 based on which you are running on. And then they have a native core. It's, it's, um, it's a wrapper for it's a wrapper for all the common platform elements that are present for different devices. And then you have the other things for iOS, there's iOS specific stuff and for Android there's Android specific stuff. Uh, okay. One last thing. So if you would actually want to extend, uh, so you you doing everything JavaScript, but there are cases where you actually want to write native code because functionally not present uh, immediately. So for that you, they are building plugins. They have a plugin manager where you can actually build plugins and then extend the functionality. For example, in-app purchases, uh, if you want to have analytics or Facebook, or you can even, even write your own custom code. Thanks, Frank.